<clears throat> so first thing first, we have to understand what is the difference between zero and character zero, OK? What is the difference between zero and the character zero, OK? That's something very important. It's always confused by, by when you're talking about strings. That's where we're going to go in trouble. So I'm going to create a character. Well, first of all, what is a character? What is a character, my friend? What is a character? It's, it's not a variable. It's a type. What is a character? What is a character? You were just right, but then you ruined it. You said it's integers, but only stores characters. What is a character? OK, what is a character, people? It's an integer, which is? Of course it's an integer as a type of variable, which is? No. It's just small. OK? It's an integer, maximum of 255 if it's unsigned. If it's signed between minus 127 and 128. Did I say it right? No. Minus 128 and positive 127. Remember, the positive ones are always one less than the negative ones. OK? So what is a character? Character is nothing but an integer. A small integer, but integer it is. OK? So I'm going to create a character. I'm going to call it 0. OK? And in that one, I will put the integer 48. Are we OK with this? Any problem with that? Then I'm going to say printf percent %d new line. And I'm going to print over here 0. What is it going to? What, what is the output of this program? What is the output of this program? Why do I think I'm playing a trick? It's 48. I'm printing 48 for heaven's sake. I'm printing 48. Yeah. You said character is an integer, you bad, bad person. You were the person who said character is an integer, and you fell for it? It's 48. It's an integer. Are we OK with this? All right. Yeah, so shame, shame. OK, now, now I'm going to print that thing as a character. And I'm going to print 0 again. So I'm printing that 0 in two different types. I'm printing its content, which is an integer, 48. Then I'm printing the character whose code is 48. All right? And three years later, when it compiles, the result of the second one will be 0. Do we understand what is the difference between a character as a shape, as a figure, OK, character 0, and the integer 0, OK? So when you want to display the character 0, you need to print the figure of the shape of something with the ASCII code 48, which is essentially the character 0 being printed. OK? But if you print that character 0 as an integer, its ASCII code is going to get printed. That is 48. Do we understand this? So the character, the figure 0. So essentially, instead of 48, now to confuse, to kind of reduce the amount of confusion, I'm going to write the proper thing. Because we do not remember the ASCII code of everything, we actually do it like this. Now I think everybody would understand what the heck is going on in here. I'm saying character 0 is the character 0, right? Which means the ASCII code 48 is going to go into the character 0. When I print it, the outcome is exactly the same thing as the other. It does not make any difference. It does not make any difference. It's the exact same thing. So essentially says the character 0 has the ASCII code, has the ASCII code, 
has the has the, the character 0, it has the ASCII code 48, but if you, so it's ASCII code as an integer, right? But if you print it as a character, it's going to print the 0. Are we okay with this? Yes. Four and five are identical statements. When you put single quotes around the character, compiler extracts its ASCII code. Because we don't have a good memory, we can't remember that 48 is ASCII code of zero. Quite frankly, I didn't know. I looked at yesterday. Now I, that's why I remember it. Okay? You put single quotes around it, so compiler extracts that 48 and puts it in zero over there for you. What you said is reverse. 47 is ASCII code of another character. Oh, okay. Let me fix this. Stop. Actually, let me clear the screen first. Clear. So that's that. Now I'm going to do something very, so, so I can now say 0 is, so. This is a very bad name for it. I put zero so we know it's zero. So now I'm saying zero is 49. Now, 48 is zero, correct? So what is 49? One, correct? So if I run it now, you'll see the second one is going to be 49 and one. OK? And if I put over here 65, what is it going to be? 8. Because 65 is ASCII code of 8. That's why I'm saying, please, when we talk about, when we say this is null, because it's always, if I told you this is, this, this is 0. I cannot tell you if it's ASCII code 0 or the character 0. That's why instead of 0, I will use the word null. Null means the integer 0, not the character 0. Null means 0, not 48. Are we okay with this? I don't know if I made it better or worse by this thing that I put on, put on over here. So, so essentially, I can do this. Character CH is set to 0. OK? Now I can say CH plus equal 6. And I'm going to say printf. This time I'm going to print CH. If you name a variable 0, you better put 0 in it. Otherwise, you're confusing the heck out of everyone. OK? So that's why I'm doing it like this. So that becomes 54, and as a result, becomes a digit 6, OK? And if I add 6 more to that, then it's going to be 60, and it's going to be the less than operator, the less than. <laughs> if you want to print less than, you have to put ASCII code 60, OK? And if I add more 6 more to it, Now it's going to be 66, and 66 is a code of B, because 65 was A, remember? Are we okay with this? Do we understand what's going on, hopefully? So just to make sure that I'm not going to make a mistake changing the character 0, because that's, I'm going to put a const over here <laughs> to make sure that I'm not going to change. Because if you name something that specific, you better not change it, because if I put 2 in 0, that's really confusing the heck out of everyone. That's why I made it a constant, to make sure it won't change. Yes? Uh, the first number is the code. And the set, see, take a look. Printf percent D. What is percent D? Integer. What is percent C? 
character. When you put percent %c, you're essentially asking, I want the shape to be printed, not the integer. So you always pass an integer to percent %c, and what the compiler does, it prints the shape for you instead of the number itself. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Okay, so we understand what is the difference between, so in here I'm gonna say zero one, uh, difference between zero and zero dot C. <laughs> okay? That's that. Initialization of an array. When you create an array, you can initialize it right off the bat to whatever you want. Okay? When you initialize it to, to a value, what happens is that the first value that you put between the curly brackets goes to the first element. So this is A0. So essentially, this will be, this will be A0, this will be A1, this will be A2, and this will be A3. Okay? What happens to A4? It will be nullified. It will be 0. Okay? So what is 5? The same. 6, 7. So the rest will be all set to 0. Now, to show you exactly what I mean by that, this is what it is. So I'm going to create a few more arrays. Int b 10. I'm going to set it to just 0. That's it. And in C, I'm not going to initialize it. I said set, I was a bad boy. I was not setting B to zero. I was initializing it to zero. Okay? Now in here, if I say, for example, int I, for I set to zero, I less than, I less than 10, and I plus plus. So I'm printing 10 things, and it's printf, percent D, comma, percent D, comma, percent D. And in here, I'm going to print A, I, B, I, and C, I. Okay? And you know what? Let's actually show it like this. So I'm going to put it over here so that becomes A, I. And in here, I'm going to put a percent D and a column. Okay? And in here, I'm going to say B, I. And in here, I'm going to say, oh, in here, I'm going to say C. And what I will do, I'm going to say for first one, put I, then AI, then I, then BI, and I, and CI. So what's going to happen will be this. Essentially, this I is going to go to the first one right? This i is going to go to the second, and this is going to go to the third index, right? And this value will go here, and this value will go here, and this value will go here. Are we okay with this? All right, so I want my, my test to show exactly what are the, the contents of, of every and each of those, uh, of those uh, uh, array elements. All right, so let's clear them all and go to new line after every and each. And in here, I'm going to say, oh, actually, it's perfect. So I want to walk through it. So I'm going to press F10, and it's going to go right at the first execution that is beginning of main. Then it comes over here. Because it's initializing it, it stops at it. Something is happening. Then this one is initializing. Something is happening. But see, it's not going to stop on a third one. Because no initialization is happening. It jumps right to for loop. You see that? 
Now if I take a look at A, you will see that A has 23, 56, 12, 89, and all zero after that, right? If you look at B, because the first one I set it to C, the first one is going to be zero, and the rest is going to be zero. So if I told you in a test, create an array of floats, of 200 floats, and set them all to zero, what would you do? Don't write a loop. Just initialize the first one to zero, and poof, everything's going to get zero. All right? And now if I take a look at the third one, I will see I have C, and it's all garbage because it's not initialized to anything. So now if I actually run the rest of the thing and go right to the end, if I execute that, this is going to be the output, which is A0 is 23, and it goes to 9. B0 is the same thing. C is going like this and like that. Are we OK with this? Now, you see it's not aligned because these are two digits, these are not, okay? I want to align them. It's something that we're going to learn later on, but we might as well talk about it right now. So in here, I'm going to say percent %3D. Put it in three spaces, three spaces, this one three spaces too. And if I run this program, it's going to be kind of aligned now. You see that? Because it's printing all the integers in three spaces. This one that is very big, it says, because it's big, I'm going to print, I'm going to ignore the three thingy. But the ones that are not, so they're actually aligned. Are we okay? So you can actually mention in how many spaces to print it. Just put uh, uh, the field width right beside. And that works for anything, for floats. For, but with, for floats, you, you know that you put 0.2, it's after the zero. If you put something before, it means the width of the whole thing. So if you say 10.2, it means in 10 spaces, put two, two digits after the decimal point. All right? We're going to come to this after the break, formatting. Are we OK with this? Initialization? All right. Next thing. So 0, 2. I should have said array initialization, but I did not. Now, now that we had these things, we could have had an, a smaller integer over here. OK? Remember that? OK? And in here, instead of having this, I can actually put f r. E D. Okay? Now if I print, I'm not going to do it that way anymore. I'm going to put percent C over here. And I'm going to say AI. So in here, if I do it like this, how it's going to print it? Int I. It's going to print Fred, correct? And after Fred, it's going to print four nulls, not zeros. Nulls. What is the shape of null? Undefined. Null is the only ASCII code that is not set to any shape or being. Remember that. Null is the only ASCII code that is not set to any shape or being. So it doesn't print anything. OK? Don't think it's space. It is space. Space is space. Its ASCII code is 20, 2, 0. OK? I'm not talking about space. I'm talking about nothing. So if that's the case, why do I bother? Instead of checking down to 10, I can say, keep printing while the AI of mine is not equal to 0, correct? If the ASCII code, or if you if you like, you can say not equal to null. That'll work too. Null literally means zero. OK, when you write null, it means zero, not to get confused. So if I do something like this, and then I go to new line, printf, backslash n, and if I actually run this program, it's going to print Fred, right? That is why, again, an interview question that you're going to get 
in most C thingy, they want to understand if you know C language or not. They're going to ask you, okay, you know C language? Yeah. Do we have anything called string in C? The wrong response is yes. Immediately you have to say, no, there is no such thing as string. String is a null terminated array of characters, which means the size of array is always bigger than what you want to hold. If I wanted that thing to be a name, I have to think, what is the biggest name in the world? And I make the array that one plus one. Why? Because I need to put a null at the end as a stop sign. So if I want to hold Fardad, it's F-A-R-D-A-D, -D, six characters, right? If I want to hold this in a character array so I can display it later, somehow I have to put a stop sign at the end. So I need the seventh character to put a zero in it, null in it. That is why whenever you use a character array to hold a word, a statement, something in it, you have to always have it one bigger than what you need because you need to put an you need to put a stop sign at the end and that stop sign is a null and it needs one character for it now this was so good they actually they called this standard they made it a standard they said hey all C programmers on the earth please listen to me Mars okay but in earth what we need to do is to remember this standard is called a string so if I told you what is a string, string is just a character array. But we have to remember to put a zero at the end. And they wrote lots of functions that follow this standard, which means ending the data in a character array with a zero, with a null. OK? And even printf has it. So instead of printing that loop like that, so essentially, instead of doing this, Welcome to put care. Put care means print a single character. So if I do this, it's going to print. Oh, look at that. See what happened. Did you see what happened? What is this zero? Can anybody tell me what's my mistake here? No. What is the error in here? New? No? See. No, 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 no. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's my mistake, big mistake. Now, put character, I didn't tell you what it is. What is A's A1? The, look at line 7. What did I put as an argument for a put character? A character, right? It's a character. It's an integer, correct? Now, what did I put for the second character? Put care. Is that a character? No, it's double code. Double code is no character. I made a mistake. Oh, okay. All right. So, this is the problem. So, <laughs> So what you saw before, that is this one, Fred zero, that zero thingy, by the game of chance, the value that was passed to that thing was the first byte held 48 in it. That's why it printed zero. It could have been any garbage, but I made a mistake. So put character, I'm printing a backslash n. What I wanted to tell you is that this mechanism that we have done over here is built into printf. If you say printf percent %s, you can actually pass an array of characters that follows the standard of a string. And then new line. Take a look. I didn't put a0, a1, a2. I just put the name of the array in here. So essentially, there is a loop like this inside the code of printf that starts from the beginning of a, keeps printing it until it hits the null, and it stops. Okay? This construct is called a string. Extremely important thing to remember. This construct is called a string. Now, because this is nuts, they created an easy way of doing that. Again, my friend over there, 
Yes, you. No, behind the person with glasses. Yeah. Remember, these two statements that I'm writing, they are identical. Character A, A10 is set to Fred. Do we understand this? Are we understanding what's going on here? So, line four, five, identical. It's just because it's too difficult to initialize an array like that, they made it like this. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. So what we call what do we call this? We call it the string literal. A literal value for a string. Okay? That is a literal value for the string. So that essentially, this essentially is an array of how many characters? The highlighted area is an array of how many characters? Five characters. Let me prove it to you. Look at this. Because you are more familiar with printf, I'm going to use printf in here. I'm going to say printf percent %c and for percent %c I have to pass a character, right? Look what I'm going to do. And in here, I'm just going to put, I'm not going to go, uh, I'm not going to go up to null. So in here, I'm just going to do it four times. Okay, and look what I'm going to do. That's nuts, isn't it? Remember I told you that that's, that is essentially an array of five characters. So when I do like this, it says this array, when i is zero, first element. This array, when i is one, it becomes the second element. This array, when i is two, it becomes the next element. It's the same thing. So that double code thingy that you are writing, essentially, you want to write a nameless array. You want to set an array to another thing. Sorry, initialize an array to another thing. You cannot set an array to another thing. Setting an array, you have to do member by member. You cannot e set, put equal sign between the two. Okay? So if I run this, you will see that it's going to print Fred, but I'm not going to put this thing on the. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at this. It's amazing. Look what they printed. You know why? What happened in a for loop? I less than four. Four by itself, when it's considered as a, a condition, is true value, right? So that became an endless loop. So it printed all the, all the guts of my computer. So now if I run it, now I'm going to see Fred is printed. But I'm not going to post this. <laughs> Okay, this is not going to be posted. It's just letting you know that when you are initializing an array of character like this, and you are saying, Fred, this is what happens. Essentially, Fred, you are saying, I want this array to be initialized to this array. And again, letting you know, letting you know, the only time that you can put an uh, assignment between two arrays is, that is at the moment of initialization. That's it, and nowhere else. Okay, so you cannot set one array. I cannot, I cannot have something like this. And remember when I told you this, you will do it. I tell, I'm telling you right now, you can't do it, but you will do it. So character array 10, you cannot do this. You cannot do this. 
Okay? You cannot set an array to another array. Initialization is only allowed at the moment of creation. You cannot do that. That's that. And finally, to show you what null termination is, this is an array of 41 characters, right? And I'm setting it to the alphabet, to letters in the alphabet. Correct? Then I set ABC 10 to 0. Then I print it. So what is ABC 10? ABC 10 is essentially 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this will be overwritten by, by null, right? Correct? When this is overwritten by null, what happens when I say print it as a string? It's going to start from the beginning and print up to J and stop. Does it mean that the rest of them are deleted in memory? No. I just brought this, the stop sign ahead of the game. So if I run this program now, oh. if I run this program now, it's going to print it up to J, although the string was so. The rest of them are there right now. OK? Are we OK with this? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? OK, you can start doing the lab, and I'm going to stop the recording.